All right, what's up, guys? We're back. We're going to do some more film review today, just kind of talking about some of my own gameplay, looking back on it. Uh, you can see up here at the top, this is a nice Stronghold's comeback. This is one of my Twitch highlights. I have not watched this back. I made a video out of this at some point, I'm sure, but let's go back and look at it together and see what we can look at. I feel like this is going to be a good one because we do know we're going to come back, but also we know that a comeback would mean that we're losing at one point, which is good because you want to be able to look at what you're doing wrong as well as what you're doing right so you can you know, try to weigh in both of those things. Before I get too far into it, I just want to say again, I am not the best player. I am not claiming to be. If you are better than me, you might not learn anything. If you aren't better than me, you might learn something. So we'll see what happens here, all right? Let's uh, let's go. All right, so off the start, a very, uh, it looks like one of my teammates went there with me, but a, a thing that I like to do in both really doubles and fours in this map is jump top mid quickly and then try to push over the top of the tower. Um, in this instance, there's a guy going for a green gun, so it looks like I'm going to just try to help my teammate get the kill real quick. Um, so I helped Ryan. But usually what I like to do is immediately uh, contest the guy that we just saw cross this way. If you jump to the top of the tower real quick, you can, you know, immediately pressure this guy and try to stop him from getting camo. I'm still able to contest. It doesn't look like I'm able to stop it. That's okay. This is probably what plays into their early lead. Uh, I have to assume they make an early lead. Again, I titled it comeback. I don't actually know what happens, um, but we're going to find out. I mean, I'm assuming we're going to come back and win the game. Um, okay, so... Immediately a quick look at like what we did. I'm playing with two of my friends here so I can talk a little bit more about like what we're consciously trying to do together. So I'm playing with my friend Samaritan or Justin and then uh, my friend Batchford or Ryan. Uh, so immediately we recognize that they're going for bottom mid off of you know the death that I just took and they're gonna be pressuring that. So we immediately turn our attention to that. Justin has overshield. We have three dead right now. We're definitely gonna get bottom mid here. They're chasing down the last kill at the moment. This is a new spawner. We have him weak. They're going to go for that kill. So immediately I'm turning around now because I know that my two teammates are crowding blue. They're going to be spawning behind me. And now we have bottom mid. We're going to get blue. They just captured red. And so now I know that the new spawners and the other team are going to be coming from red. And so I'm trying to put myself in a good spot for that. Uh, notice, you know, right now I'm just trying to play a little sneaky. I'm just trying to let them kind of come out. So I'm just trying to put myself up against the wall. I'm not just trying to run out. You know, and just give myself, you know, and, and and because of that, like, I got the free kill on that guy. You know, if I had run out to where I am now, even in anticipation being that they'll be in, that they were going to be in red, if I just went to the top of the sneak and stood there, like, looking for him, you know. So, like, I did that, and I'm still waiting for a second. You could see, like, I was waiting to see what was going to happen. I wasn't just running out, because if I was just standing here, then he would have seen me, and then I would have had a harder fight. I would have taken damage. I might have, I could have lost. There could have been two of them shooting at me at once. But here, I'm going to take advantage of the numbers we have and go ahead and hop. Go ahead and top the, hop the new thing. I'm aware of them spawning next to me, so we're just going to go ahead and see if we can power through this cap, which looks like we do. So we have a good three cap. Now, when you find yourself in a situation like this, if you have three dead, or, or excuse me, a three cap, and now you're... <laughs> Uh, an old problem I had is we would, you know, my team and I would work together. We'd finally get all the objectives done. We'd get, we'd get the three cap, but then it's like, now what? Now, obviously, of course, you want to keep the three cap, but when there's not an automatic objective to look to, like, oh, well, we got the two cap. Now I want to start working with my team maybe towards the three cap, which isn't always necessary, of course, but that's like a natural instinct to go for the third stronghold. Here we have three strongholds. What do we do next? Well, you got to take a look at the situation here. So I do have one teammate dead. I know Ryan's right next to me and Justin's across the map. We're blocking red and blue. Tower is wide open and my teammate died from tower. It's a very safe assumption that they're going to be spawning tower. And look, here they are straight away. So now not only do we have control of the map and we know where they are, we want to try to stay alive and keep them in the tower area. We don't want to let them leave. I also don't just want to be holding forward and throwing away my life here, um, which, you know, this is... Okay, so yeah, this is, I can see that they're rotating back to blue and Justin called that out as he died. Um, so now I'm positioning myself again, though. You can see even here, I'm not trying to get, put myself out in a ridiculous spot. And these are subtle things, but this will help your game go a longer way. This is something I really need to do improve on within the last couple of years, watching your angles. And so watch, even though I know they're going blue, even though I think that their attention is going to be blue, I'm not just walking here out in the open with no cover. I'm immediately trying to get myself in a spot where I can look and be helpful, but also I'm not just out taking free damage. <clears throat> and still here, I have not pushed past where I am because now I can back up in a tower. As you can see, I planned for, uh, they ended up dropping two on me, but you know, that's just a subtle thing that better players will be doing, especially players that are better than me have a better habit of doing that even at every point, you know, sometimes I'll autopilot and I won't be thinking so much about my back or my other angles and, you know, I'll get a little too tunneled on what's in front of me. Um, but yeah, you know, that's important. And you know, like, that's a subtle thing, but just like, there's an example too. Um, 
see if I can finish this fight. Doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to, that's tragic. That play doesn't work out. Let's go back and look at that for a second. Let's see what went wrong. Uh, we don't wanna just talk about the good moments. We gotta talk about the bad moments too, let's see. So initially what I think I did do well is I called out to Justin and I said there's somebody close to me. So I thrust back to help him. Now we have a 2v1, there's no way we can lose this. I do win. And also if you notice what I did this is going back to what I was just saying about watching your angles. I didn't just thrust back willy-nilly. I thrust it back towards the pillar because I want to make sure I'm still on cover. And what I do here by staying next to the pillar is I make sure that nobody to my right towards high pit can be shooting me. So I can't. I couldn't have been taking damage from this angle. So that was just like, you know, again, like better players are going to be doing that. So you need to start doing that as well. Um, you know, here it looks like I can confirm this kill. So I'm going to round the corner pre-firing. But what I did do, of course, was disregard my back and that gets me costed so um you know just the kills didn't come quick enough you know good good job on them to get the kills faster than us sometimes you'll find yourself in situations where most of the people on the map will be involved in one fight especially in a map like this uh you know where okay this is a time where a team's making a push towards pit we're all gonna fight it uh you know everybody wants to make it out alive but you don't always you don't always get to do that so we have two dead here now you know if you're if if you're trying to figure out when is it a comfortable time to push, you know, well, when do I know my team has the best position? Like you, you don't always know that, but you do have to play sometimes off of like what you do know. And in this case, we have two dead. Ryan's fighting somebody in red. So I have three players accounted for him. I had two are on the respawn screen. One's in front of me. I don't have to worry about this. I'm going to start capturing this. I see both now. Now I know where both of them are and they're going to be spawning outside. Um, the reason they're going to be spawning outside here, just a subtle note. If you, Ryan's here on the inside side of red, if they're going to be spawning anywhere, they're not spawning behind me. My teammates are there. They're going to be spawning outside towards right outside. That's just the that's just a vacant spawn point considering this corner is pretty blocked off. And so I recognize this. You can see I start looking for it. I was looking, you know, I'm looking for this low. And I'm trying to like protect myself. They get a really good nade and I'm dead, you know. Uh, the reason I didn't just hold forward the other way towards the other side of the pit is because I'm aware that they're going to be coming from, like they could have been crashing this lane already. And so I'm not just like holding forward and I'm watching for these nades and stuff and it doesn't work out. That's okay, your bottom pit. Great. So maybe I should have bailed on that play earlier. Uh, you know, I tried to make a heads up play, it didn't work out. If I were if I had heavier anticipation, if I were a smarter player going into this play. Like this is part of what you need to do when you when you look at this. Don't don't look at everything and take it for what it is. Don't look at your play MV, well, that was the best I could do. It's like it's not true. You can do better. This is how you do it, right? So let me let me pay attention to what's happening here. I think initially. Helping my teammates save red and go for pit isn't the worst play here because we can theoretically get some kills in red and then get this kill pit, all right? So off the fly, this isn't necessarily the worst play, okay? I'm trying to get these pit kills. We did that. We're saving red. So, so far, so good. But what it has ha what has changed, and you know, in, there are some variables here. Justin has died, so now Ryan's by himself. I still should be aware that the other two are going to be in this area of the map over in this top side, um, like red outside. And so maybe my best play now is to not go for pit, rather double back and go for blue, because Ryan might lose that. And sure enough, the moment he dies, I should bail. Like that, those extra shots are bad. I should have been out of there, and it gets me killed. So, you know, if we're a little bit more precautionary, I can play a little more anticipation heavy. And see, Justin spawned with Benji, we got that. So honestly, I think looking back, the best play I could have made, especially if we factor in this too, which we can't ignore, is about to be new power-ups. New power-ups are gonna come up at about 950. So if if I were thinking about that in the time, which it doesn't look like I was, right? If I had been doing that, then I could have made a better play here. The moment Ryan drops, the easy decision to make, especially after I confirmed that they're both in red, is to just go bottom tower and go try to hold down tower, keep them over here by red plat, don't let them push through freely, and then we can maybe contest and get new camo. So really the easily best play I could have made here is being playing for camo and not throwing my life away. What I did there is open up their opportunities to cross for camo. As you can see, that guy just did it. See, this guy's high pit. He's going to end up getting a contested camo. He's probably going to get it. I just saw him run bottom tower. So Ryan is now in a 1v2. I'm here to help him. It's a 2v2 for camo. We got one. It looks like we might actually win this fight. So that works out. We get two dead, and we're going to get camo. We actually ended up getting three dead. I don't know what's going on with uh, Overshield at the time. It looks like they have it. So uh, that ended up working out. But again, if we wanted to look critically, and that's you know something that I think is important too when you look at your own stuff. Um, you, you might not have all the answers all the time for everything you want to know, but I spent some time watching footage with my friend Laz or Callus. He's a professional Halo coach. And what I learned from watching footage with him and learning is that you don't necessarily have to know all the answers all the time. Rather, just know what the right questions are to ask. So in the play where I was high pit and I thought eh, I could have done better, 
You know, I, 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 init I initially praised myself for anticipating the people coming turbine, but then I went back and criticized myself for not being more aware of, you know, what was going on on the map. I should have been playing for camo there and I should have been all over that. So, you know, ask yourself the question, what was the better play I could have been doing here? What's the, what could I be doing better? You know, you don't want to just be running around and thinking, ah, oh, it didn't work out. I did okay. Oh, it didn't work out. I did okay. Like sometimes that's true, but sometimes you could have done something better and you need to try to learn those things. <clears throat> so here we definitely want to pick up this kill which it looks like he's gonna get away that's tragic um and i'm definitely gonna die here looks like actually this guy might get shit on okay so i died all right um i won't elaborate on that because it looks like i, I honestly was talking to you guys for a second i didn't fully pay attention to that but now we find ourselves in a three cap so let's just talk about it from that perspective when you find yourselves in a three cap you have some decisions to make. Oftentimes you are multiple dead because that's how they get control. So now here, let's assess. All right, we have two dead. We know that my teammates right outside. I'm right inside. My teammates should spawn near me. They did they spawn behind me. The obvious choice is for us to start playing for red. Now, this doesn't mean go into red and stand there and expect them to just let you have it because they're not just going to let you have it. Especially you have to think the other team has nothing to worry about except the strongholds that they're losing because they have all three strongholds they don't need to worry about blue or middle so they're going to start pushing towards red so here we are anticipating that and we're getting picked so like this is a good i'm playing with a couple of my friends and uh batchford is a professional european player so he, he's a he is a very very strong player justin my homie also a very good player we're coordinating what we're doing we baited red there and that's usually what you want to try to do if you're working with your team uh obviously the higher level your team is the more efficient you're going to be at this um you know we're just working with three uh, three of us instead of four but the idea here is i'm putting myself in a good spot anticipating that they're going to fly towards red because we're going to start capping that i have somebody behind me i don't need to worry about my back great great okay we're contesting it i'm coming back because i'm anticipating that they were going to fly in you, you i could actually hear myself call out in game i thought that they're going to be flying from outside which they are but i ended up getting good timing on this dude um, so, you know, really probably a better play is waiting until I let them really cross outside and then going in to help. But instead, I cross a little early. I get fortunate timing on this guy. Get a two-shot melee with a DMR. That's simple enough. And now we're going to get those picks. My teammates have numbers in there. I'm going to go ahead and start trying to cap mid. I end up getting out because I realize that's risky. And I'm going to die here. So, yeah, I don't like that play either by myself. You know, that was... I was trying to be a little bit ahead of the curve and try to go ahead and start maybe getting the hop on bottom mid so we could be efficient on recapping that, but that was just a little too ahead. I need to make sure I'm pacing myself with my teammates. Um, if you think to yourself, man, I feel like I'm often doing the right thing, but I'm too fast. Uh, my teammates aren't quite with me. And I think like it's, you know, there are two, there's two possibilities. Like it could be your fault because you're going too fast. Hold on, let me go back. So here, let me, let me look at what I'm talking about here. Okay. So, right, like my teammates, there's two possibilities. I can put too much faith in my teammates to get their play done. Or I could be playing too fast. Like there, there's possibilities where your teammates aren't picking up on what should be happening and they should be helping you. Or I'm just putting too much on them at, at the time. And that's what I'm doing right here. They weren't going to get the kills as fast as they needed. So I'm already capping. And what that it did, it, what that did was allow the other two players on the other team to immediately just put pressure on me because I'm capping bottom middle by myself. I apologize for having such word vomit there that was so hard to say. Um, but a better way to pay attention to how you pace yourself with your teammates is like, okay, so I you can always take a look on where your radar is, right? And see where your teammates are. So that that is like something to pay attention to. I'm not joking. Like that, that's really good. But like here, in this instance, this is a really crucial thing you can start paying pay attention to. You can use your teammates without communication to your advantage. This is just a heightened awareness level that better players have. And again, I'm not saying I'm the best player. All right, this guy's shooting at me, right? I recognize that. I back up, but I also have Ryan coming in, shooting at him. So now I know, and I'm, I swear I'm looking at this. When I see Ryan's name, he starts looking back for Ryan. But look what I did first, okay? I let Ryan get the kill, but guess what I also did, right? I repeat because I know that his attention's gonna go to Ryan. Now his attention's on Ryan. I know this, so I'm coming right back. Even though I'm weak, I'm here to help. My gun's raised, I'm ready to shoot. So you have to be thinking about what your enemies are doing and how you can coordinate with your teammates isn't necessarily by like three, two, one, go. It's like, I'm watching what my teammates are doing. I'm watching his pacing. I'm watching what's happening on the map. And I'm specifically paying attention. In fact, once we get through this game, I will go back and, and talk a little bit about uh, a really good clip I have to talk about what I'm talking about here about paying attention to your teammates and understanding like 
that pacing. All right. Um, so we have three dead. The last guy is blue. This is obvious. My teammates should be flying towards blue. They're going to spawn blue as well, right? Simple enough. Great. Okay. So I'm here to help. We're all just going to stay alive. Make sure we try to keep them. We know where they are. They're at blue. There they go. They got blue alley slash top tower. Going into front blue. Here's the last two. Last guy's inside blue. I want to help my teammate Ryan. I want to get to him as fast as possible. Here we go. Okay. Another thing, you know, and this is a good thought of like paying attention to um, coordinating with your teammates. In this instance, I saw that guy go into blue. I know he's flying at Ryan. I'm going to fly in there too. And I already know this guy's fighting Ryan. In fact, I know Ryan's shooting his gun because he's yellow. Your teammates will turn yellow when they're shooting their gun. If they're firing their weapon, they're yellow. It's something to pay attention to. I know he's in combat. So I know this guy's not looking at me. So I don't run in here. I just start, I just walk in there shooting. Like, you know, if you were hesitant, if you come in there and you go, that might seem obvious to some people, but if you come in here and you peek for a second just to verify the situation, that could be the difference between Ryan dying and living in that situation. He might need that extra bullet that I can, you know, contribute to that fight. So I'm just going in full speed. Uh, they end up getting a pick on me. Good stuff. All right. I know where all three of my teammates are. They're in blue and blue outside. So I recognize that I'm the edge player over here. This is going to be three dead. Easy. Last guy's bottom pit. We're going to collapse on this. No problem. My whole team's still in one, like, we're in one wave. They should be spawning red. They are. We get a free kill. This guy's going to, should die inside red. He's super weak. One shot inside red. I'm here to help pit. I'm trying to help my teammate pit. So... One thing to look at here, you know, this is just a quick quick priority decision making. I have two options here. I have the guy in red to go for who's weak that I'm aware of. He's one shot. And then I also, I'm hearing the call outs for bottom pit and I want to prioritize that. I'm not too worried about going for <clears throat> red because I just, I'd rather have pit than red. So it's okay that they have red. That's fine. We have two dead. I hear the red plat call out. So I'm going to go for that quick. I'm getting shot in the back, but I looks like I might be able to live. He's going to live as well. That nade didn't quite work out. That's tragic. Okay, so we still have a two cap. We're getting blue. We're getting red, but they're getting blue. But that's okay, right? We're just trading those off. That's all right. I want to win that. We trade that. Okay, so we're both one dead. They obviously want to be trying to push towards bottom mid now. So we're two dead. We're three dead. I'm last alive. Okay, we just had somebody spawn on me. I know. All right, we're three inside here. We're trying to play for the new power ups. And then Ryan spawns on my nade. All right, well, we got overshield, so this is really big. So in this situation, we have to look, you know, they're getting bottom mid, and then they're already going to start pushing towards red, but that's okay. We, we, are, we are all four here. We're all four alive. We want to get the overshield. Okay, so we're going to be able to make a play together here. Uh, freakiest five shot ever. Three dead. Camo's going to give himself away. We love that. You know, uh, Camo, you know... In this situation, you all right. In this situation, you should recognize pretty early. See, this is this this is a bad play. He's trying to go for a back smack on overshield, which I understand, but I, I just still don't like this play out of camo. Uh, it's matchmaking, you know. Whatever. I'm not trying to grill who made the play. I don't care. I just think if this is a point, if you have camo, you never want to give yourself up. You especially if you guys are three dead. You know what? So he kills Ryan, sure. All right, let's say he got the back smack. Then what? You're still dead. You want to sit on that camo as long as possible. In this situation, you're about to lose. Your team, your team's down. And again, this is matchmaking, so I'm, I'm sure that there's, you know, nobody's really thinking about it like this. But if we're being critical, camo wants to stay alive as long as possible, let his teammates come back. And then honestly, he can be a flank player because we, don't, we didn't know where he was. So he could have stayed on that window and been behind us and really, you know, caused some damage. But this is last guy here. We're going to all collapse. This guy should die, no problem. I'm just watching my angles again. You know, that's a great example. I didn't end up living. I little. Uh, it looks like I over-challenged a little because, you know, it looks like we're about to win the game. But another great example, just watching your angles. Uh, you know, something to pay attention to. You guys just want to make sure you're safe at all times. All right. Um, you know, I actually, I'll, I'll break down this fight real quick. I think this is a good example of what I was talking about at the tail end of the previous video I made doing this. You know, if you want to quickly assess your enemy's cover, he's only going to go here, right? This is the only option. He's going to go back towards this because if he goes towards high pit, he's out in the open. And so reasonably speaking, he's not going to do that, right? If a player wants to stay alive, you know, they're going to stick back towards the close cover. So watch my reticle. My reticle never really 
moves, I know he's going to end up going back towards that cover. And so you'll see me not really mess with my uh, reticle at all, and he'll just kind of walk right into it. Yeah, like I, I kept it to the right because I figure he's going to end up going to the right. There's really no reason not to. I didn't move my reticle pretty much at all during that fight. Didn't seem necessary. So that was it. So it turns out that wasn't as much of a comeback as I really thought. It was kind of just a normal Strongholds game, but I think there were some good things to look at there. But let's talk a little bit one more about coordinating with your teammates. This isn't even necessarily coordinating. I guess that's not even the right word. It's just paying attention to your teammates and paying attention to what's happening. So this is a, uh, an exterm I got the other day. I'm going to show you guys quickly the clip in full speed, and then I'll go back and talk about what I want to real quick. Okay, so nothing too crazy. I swear I didn't just play this clip just to be like, look at this exterm. This is one kill I want to talk about specifically, and it is the triple kill. Right here, what I do for the triple kill is immediately, like I get this shot off and I thrust. Okay, so I put myself next to, the, you know, I put myself next to cover. Again, talking about angles as, I, as I've been talking about. I jump back out because I want to get the triple. Okay, then I realize that he's full shields and I need to stop. But what I do realize is my teammate's shooting him. Now I wait, I swear on my life I did this. I waited, I wait for him to start shooting at my teammate and then I jump back out. I am one shot right there, right? I'm just making sure like this is just a, it's a very quick kill. The reason this clip is possible is because I'm paying attention to this. He's no longer looking at me. Now I can jump back out, my kill. He's no longer like, I just waited for my shields there, got the reload off, but like that's it, you know? So like. Pay attention to those things. Pay attention to what's happening around you. You'll find it's a lot easier to pu push and shoot with your teammates, even if you're not calling out when you pay attention to that sort of thing. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I put one bullet down. There you go. Very patient, making sure I let him take his attention towards Mike, and then I can jump back out and get the kill. All right, guys. Hope you guys found this helpful. I definitely want to do some doubles moving, or not moving forward. I, I want to do a doubles video. I saw that recommended. So I did two of these in the 4v4 setting. The next one will be a doubles one. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one.